Hello and welcome to Watch Releases Recap for the week of October 1st until October the 7th. Let's begin with Logins and their new Spirit Flyback Chronograph in Titanium. Logins introduced their Spirit Collection in 2020 and there are a few different models in this collection. One of my favorites was GMT Zulu Time that I covered a few weeks ago. Well now there is a new addition, a Flyback Chronograph. Notably, Logins actually already has a chronograph in this collection, but it's not a flyback and it looks quite different. This new flyback chronograph of course features the flyback chronograph function. It's not an easy complication to add to a watch, but it does have a very rich history like Logins themselves. One thing I will encourage you guys to do is actually go to Logins website. I will leave a link in the description below. It's one of the coolest web pages I've seen in a very long time. A little known fact about me, I used to do web design and I know how difficult it was to design something like this. This web page is beautiful, it's very interactive and it even gives you a few different uh, cool little nuggets like you can start and pause the chronograph and it even gives you a way to activate the flyback chronograph function so you can see what that would look like in action. Essentially it resets the chronograph seconds hand back to zero but it starts going again. So it doesn't reset it to zero and stop like in your regular chronograph. A couple of other notable things about this watch, it has 100 meters of water resistance. It comes in a grade five titanium case and you do need that lightweight titanium case because the watch itself is quite large. 43 millimeter case diameter by 17 millimeters thickness. Yeah, that's a big boy on your wrist. So you really do have to try these watches on before pulling a trigger. I haven't seen one in person yet. Sometimes these thicker watches kind of disappear on the wrist and you can pull them off. Sometimes it just wears like a big slab of metal on your wrist. I don't know how this one will wear. I hope that it's that disappearing act on your wrist instead of having this ginormous thing on your wrist that kind of ruins the watch. And no matter how cool the complication in the history of the watch is, if the watch is not comfortable to wear, then who's gonna buy it? The watch is priced at 5,400 euros on a NATO strap or 5,750 on a titanium bracelet. Of course, go for the titanium bracelet. It's a no brainer. Yes, it's more expensive, but then it will be much more expensive trying to find a titanium bracelet for this watch after the fact. Zelo Swordfish Field and Diver Watches. On this channel, I reviewed quite a few different Zelos models, including the Swordfish model. That was a few versions ago. Every version, they keep on improving them and making slight modifications to make the watches better. This time we have two different versions. There is the Field version in a 38 millimeter case diameter, and there is a diver version in a 40 millimeter case diameter. The field version comes in two different case materials. There is the bronze one and there is the stainless steel one. The diver version only comes in the stainless steel cases. There are a bunch of different dials to choose from, a bunch of different color combinations to choose from. My favorite are these conservative ones. I like the blue and black bezel version or this just black on black bezel version for the divers and as far as the field watches go i prefer the stainless steel ones over the bronze just personal preference i like this gray dial version or this sort of purple dial version i think both of those look sharp but you can also go for something a little bit crazier as far as the pricing goes i think zealous is being very fair both the field and the diver watch are the same price $300, they're both powered by the same Seiko NH35 movements, and both of them have amazing loom. The diver versions feature a ceramic bezels. They also feature pretty good finishes for the price point. Overall, I'm impressed with Zelos watches, and I wanted to highlight this release. Moving on to the next one. The Seiko Pro Specs Landmaster 30th Anniversary, reference SLA071. In 1993, Seiko released their very first Landmaster, this rugged, over-the-top watch you would take going exploring, going mountaineering, hiking, things like that. 30 years later, we are gifted this newer version of this model, and I think this version actually looks really good. If you speak Seiko language, you know that SLA is part of their higher-end models. This watch comes in a 42 millimeter titanium case. It's only 12.7 millimeters thick, but it does have a bit of a longer lock to lock distance of 50 millimeters. So even though it's a thinner watch, it would still wear pretty large. There is a rotating compass bezel, screw down crown giving this watch 200 meters of water resistance, and the watch is powered by Seiko's premium caliber 8L35 automatic movement, which is essentially a Grand Seiko caliber 9S 
0.55. It's an automatic movement with 26 joules and a beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour, plus it has 50 hours of power reserve. With a premium movement and premium finishes, I especially like this gradient on a dial. I think it looks very beautiful. According to Seiko, it's inspired by the view you see from the top of Mount Everest. I can sort of see that. With all of that in the watch, it comes with a premium pricing. And I think actually the price is pretty fair. It's expensive, but it is a limited edition to 1000 pieces and the price is 2,800 euros. It's expensive, but if you think about the fact that you get a Grand Seiko movement, this beautiful look and the limited edition, I think it's somewhat okay. Moving on to the next release and another Seiko. The reference of this one is SPB411. It's a GMT navigator timer reissue. This watch is a reissue of Seiko's first GMT watch with a rotating bezel from 1968. That watch was called the Navigator Time, and you can see why this Prospects Land Series GMT is a throwback to the same watch. The looks of them are very similar, even the sizing is very similar. This new version comes in a 38 and a half millimeter case with 12.6 millimeter thickness, and it's only 45.2 millimeters lock to lock. Just like the original, it features this gray sunburst dial, a rotating GMT bezel, that's executed in a brushed stainless steel. I quite like this look. The crown is at the four o'clock position and there is a date window at the three o'clock position. I'm not a big fan of this short GMT hand. I know that it's a throwback to the original, but I don't know, I wish it was a bit longer, but hey, that's just a personal preference. This watch is powered by the in-house caliber 6R54 automatic movement that has 24 joules and beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour with 72 hours of power reserve. It's exactly the same movement as we saw in the earlier release of the Seiko Alpinus GMT. Now we find the same movement in this watch. The price of this one is 1500 US dollars and it's limited to 4000 pieces. So quite a large limited release. If you really wanted to score one, I don't think you'll have too much trouble buying it. The price is a bit too high, at least in my opinion. I think this watch should be around 11, 1200 US dollars at 1500 US dollars. Yeah, it's, it's hard to justify buying this watch, especially since you can buy the original from 1968 for around the same price. And I think factoring the coolness level of the original, plus the fact that it's the original, is the old watch, I'd probably go for that version over this. But again, if you want something modern, something that you can wear on a daily basis, then this is a good option. Victorinox Inox Chrono. Victorinox is known for their Swiss Army knives and their watches. Their watches are known to be very tough. You can drop them from great heights. You can go anywhere, do anything with these timepieces and they will take it. Well, now there is a new chronograph watch added to the iconic Inox line. There are quite a few different versions of this watch added to the collection. There are stainless steel versions. There are titanium versions with a carbon deposit bezels and there are full carbon deposit cases with carbon deposit bezel. So it really depends on what you prefer. Also, the watches come on different straps options and you can even have them on stainless steel bracelet. You are spoiled for choice with how many different options there are. There are also different options for the dials. You can go with the gray dial, the blue dial, or this burgundy red dial. And again, depends on which version you go for in terms of the metal, you can choose different dial options with that version. All versions come in a 43 millimeter case diameter. The bezel has 24 hour markings, but it's not a GMT watch, it's just there for your military time. And the bezel is actually not rotating. By the looks of this watch, it looks like the watch should have a rotating bezel, but it doesn't. Keeping up with the tradition of Victorinox watches being very tough, this one features 200 meters of water resistance, and it is an ISO certified watch. All of that in a pretty thin case, 13 millimeters only, but that's because this watch features a quartz chronograph movement. Ronda Caliber 5040.E is a great Swiss made quartz chronograph movement. It has a day date complication and of course a chronograph complication timing up to 30 minutes. The price of this new chrono model ranges from $800 for the basic stainless steel case on a rubber strap all the way up to $1,250 US dollars for the full carbon case watch. So it really depends on which version you go for. And there is a few different price points. 
I personally like how these watches look. I like how over the top and angular the cases are. Uh, they're very attractive, but they're for a very specific type of buyer. I don't know if I'll be racing out to buy one and add one to my collection, but I'm glad that they exist. Airbus Origin line of watches. Airbus is a brand new micro brand from one and only Jody from the YouTube channel just one more watch. Jody took all the years of experience reviewing probably hundreds of different watches and created his own watch company. Really great to see that. And the watches themselves actually look pretty good. There are a bunch of different options to choose from in terms of the bezel and the dial color combinations. My favorite is the blue and blue, blue dial, blue bezel version. For the first offering, this watch offers some impressive specs for the price. The watch is priced at 299 US dollars and it features a stainless steel case with a stainless steel bracelet, a ceramic bezel insert, a sapphire crystal, Seiko NH35 automatic movement and super impressive loom, at least looking at the pictures. The watch also has a reasonable case size, 41 millimeters diameter by only 12.7 millimeters case thickness and a comfortable 47 millimeter lug to lug distance. I think these watches now are available for pre-order. Check them out if you're interested and if you want to support Jody and his new adventure. He didn't ask me to make this mention or anything like that. I just wanted to highlight this release because I genuinely think that the watches look pretty good and the value for money is definitely there. And that's it. Those were the watch releases for this week. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this and leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what releases stood out to you, which ones you liked, which ones were okay. I always enjoy reading your comments. Thanks for watching this one and we'll see you next time. Bye.